In 1963, the United States Air Force asked for proposals for an airborne warning and control system to replace its EC-121 warning stars, which had served in that role for over a decade. The new aircraft would take advantage of improvements in radar technology and computer-aided radar data analysis and data reduction. Approval was given on January 26, 1973 for the full-scale development of the AWACS system. Orders were placed for three pre-production aircraft, the first of which performed its maiden flight in February 1975. IBM and Hazeltine were selected to develop the mission computer and display system. The Air Force reactivated a former airborne early warning unit, redesignated as the 552nd Airborne Warning and Control Wing, AWACS, located at Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The newly established unit utilized a system designed to detect aircraft, ships and vehicles at long ranges and perform command and control of the battle space in an air engagement by directing fighter and attack aircraft strikes. The new plane was the Boeing E-3 Sentry, a specific system with a rotodome rotating radome that incorporates a major advance in capability, being the first airborne early warning system to use a pulse Doppler radar, which allowed it to track targets normally lost in ground clutter. Right at that time it burst onto the worldwide operations scene as the primary way of projecting American power during the end of the Cold War. The Boeing E-3 Sentry aircraft is used by the United States, NATO, Royal, French, and Royal Saudi Air Forces. In October 1979, two E-3 aircraft, 240 aircrew, and support personnel responded to a short notice deployment to South Korea following the assassination of President Park Chung-hee. E-3 aircraft and aircrews flew 54 missions, totaled 370 flying hours and provided deep-look surveillance into the Korean Peninsula. In addition, during the deployment the E-3 detachment provided extensive joint training for the U.S. and Republic of Korea Air Defense Forces. From December 1979 through May 1980, another deployment package of two E-3 aircraft, two aircrews, and support personnel accomplished joint training operations in Central Europe and the Mediterranean region supporting the U.S. Navy 6th Fleet and Allied Forces. The training deployment also featured the first E 3 AWACS visit to Egypt. Called a new kind of battleship diplomacy in the 80s, the readiness commitment of the AWACS was the ability to reply anywhere, anytime, and crew members kept their mobility bags packed. From one day to the next, they could be flying to Okinawa, Iceland, or Saudi Arabia. On October 1, 1980, Four E-3s and approximately 200 personnel deployed to Saudi Arabia in support of European Liaison Force 1, ELF 1, operations. The Iran-Iraq war caused concerns in both the United States and Saudi Arabia. They believed that the conflict could spill over into the adjacent Gulf region countries. Planners organized ELF 1 to counter this threat and demonstrated American resolve, and the United States sent a symbol of their commitment in the E-3A century. The 552nd supported ELF 1, and continued to provide around-the-clock airborne radar coverage during the entire course of the eight-year war. In fact, the E-3's ELF-1 obligation did not officially end until April 16, 1989. In December 1980, four E-3 aircraft, air crews, and support personnel deployed to Ramstein Air Base, West Germany, to conduct joint training with elements of the NATO Air Defense Network. This deployment coincided with increased international tension over a possible Warsaw Pact invasion of Poland. Two 552nd E-3 aircraft and personnel already on temporary assignment at Keplavik Naval Air Station, Iceland, while two other E-3 packages traveled from Tinker Air Force Base. By mid-January 1981, the crisis in Poland subsided allowing the E-3 aircraft and aircrews to redeploy home to Tinker, but short-duration E-3 training flights to the European continent continued thereafter. Later, in October 1981, two 552nd Airborne Warning and Control Wing E-3 aircraft revisited Egypt following the assassination of President Anwar el-Sadat. In August 1983, the 552nd sent a single support package to Sudan to provide airborne radar coverage in that nation as it repelled rebel forces near Khartoum. That same year, 552nd activities increased in the Pacific Theater following the Soviet military air forces downing of a Korean Airlines, Flight 007. From 1 to September 15, 1983, the 552nd supported the salvage operation and earned an Air Force Outstanding Unit Award in the process. 
In August 1989, the 552nd again expanded its mission, becoming involved in the war against drugs. Under higher headquarters direction, the wing began patrolling the southern border of the United States and beyond. On December 20, 1989, Operation Just Cause highlighted the early anti-drug campaign and featured 552nd Airborne Warning and Control Wing participation in the invasion of Panama and capture of Manuel Antonio Noriega. On August 10, 1990, the 552nd Airborne Warning and Control Wing began its deployment to the Persian Gulf in support of Operation Desert Shield. On January 16, 1991, E-3 support packages of the 552nd executed airborne control over several of the initial strikes on Iraq in Operation Desert Storm. Beginning on January 17, 1991, Air crews of the 552nd Airborne Warning and Control Wing flew as part of Operation Proven Force in the Persian Gulf War. The E-3 aircraft and air crews flew over 7,000 combat hours during Desert Storm, sustaining a 91% mission-capable rate. They controlled almost 32,000 strike sorties and over 20,000 air refueling sorties. The Asian theater continued in importance for the AWACS mission, operating out of Kadena and Yokota Air Force bases in Japan and Western Pacific operations including SR-71, U-2 and other systems involved in monitoring the activities of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, the Korean People's Army in North Korea, and the armed forces of the Russian Federation. Nearly 150 airmen from the 513th Air Control Group and 552nd Air Control Wing deployed to the Hawaiian Islands in July 2017, participating the Century Aloha Exercise, an ongoing series of fighter combat exercises, hosted by the Hawaii Air National Guard's 154th Wing and involves multiple types of aircraft and services. In March 2021, service members from seven NATO member nations met at Nellis Air Force Base, supporting the Red Flag Exercise to test and sharpen their abilities in countering threats while building a cohesive protocol for real-world events. It was February 1982, that saw that the first NATO E-3 Airborne Warning and Control System, AWACS, aircraft arrive at NATO Air Base Geilenkirchen. To celebrate the 40th anniversary of this event, the NATO E-3 AWACS held a tribute with former commanders, community leaders and friends of the component, in attendance. Air Commodore, OF-6, Keith Taylor, Force Deputy Commander said of the mission. NATO had a vision. A vision of nations coming together in order to form the Alliance's first multinational flying unit. Those original nations, each bringing different cultures, languages, and perspectives came together to form an organization whose success is critical to the defense of the Alliance. Herzlich willkommen beim NATO E3 Alphaband. Bienvenue au E3A Component. Welcome to the E3A Component. Bienvenue al Componente E3A. Welcome to the E3A Component. Welcome to the E3A Component. Welcome by the E3A Component. In providing air surveillance while delivering air battle management and command and control capabilities to NATO over the last 40 years, the AWACS is today involved in a wide range of missions including U.S. military readiness, peacetime air policing, support to counterterrorism, evacuation operations, humanitarian aid and crisis response missions. From the blue skies over the Mediterranean to the Persian Gulf to the South China Sea, AWACS has been a crucial interface with our allies and the leading edge of our technological superiority on the modern battlefield.